Chapter fifty five of Pushing to the Front by Horizon Sweat Martin. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Luke Sartor. Chapter fifty five Take a Pleasant Thought to Bed with You. Shut off your mental steam when you quit work. Lock up your business when you lock up your office or factory at night. Don't drag it into your home to mar your evening or to distress your sleep. You cannot afford to allow the enemies of your peace and happiness to etch their black pictures deeper and deeper into your consciousness. Many people lie down to sleep as the camels lie down in the desert, with their packs still on their backs. They do not seem to know how to lay down their burdens and their minds go on working a large part of the night. If you are inclined to worry during the night, to keep your mental faculties on the strain, taut, it would be a good plan for you to have a bow in your bedroom and unstring it every night as a reminder that you should also unstring your mind, so that it will not lose its springing power. The Indian knows enough to unstring his bow just as soon as he uses it, so that it will not lose its resilience. If a man who works hard all day uses his brain a large part of the night, doing his work over and over again, he gets up in the morning weary, jaded. Instead of having a clear, vigorous brain capable of powerfully focusing his mind, he approaches his work with all his standards down and with about as much chance of winning as a racehorse who has been driven all night before a contest would have. Not even a man with the will of a Napoleon could win out under such conditions. It is of the utmost importance to stop the grinding, rasping process in the brain at night, and to keep from wearing life away and wasting one's precious vitality. Many people become slaves to night worry. They get into a chronic habit of thinking after they retire, especially of contemplating their troubles and trials, and it is a very difficult habit to break. It is fundamental to sound health, to make it a rule never to discuss business troubles and things that vex and irritate one at night, especially just before retiring, for whatever is dominant in the mind when one falls asleep continues its influence on the nervous structure long into the night. Some people age more at night than during the daytime, when it would appear, if they must worry at all, the reverse ought to be true. When hard at work during the day, they do not have much time to think of their ailments, their business troubles, their misfortunes. But when they retire, the whole brood of troubling thoughts and worry ghosts fill the mind with horrors. They grow older instead of younger, as they would under the influence of sound, refreshing sleep. Mental discord saps vitality, lessens courage, shortens life. It does not pay to indulge in violent temper, corroding thoughts, mental discord in any form. Life is too short, too precious, to spend any part of it in such unprofitable, soul-racking, health-destroying business. The imagination is particularly active at night, and all unpleasant, disagreeable things seem a great deal worse then than in the day because in the silence and darkness imagination magnifies everything. We have all dreamed of the evening's experience after we went to sleep. Perhaps it is the refrain of a song or the intense situation in a play which we live over again. This shows how powerful impressions are, how important it is never to retire to rest in a fit of temper or in an ugly unpleasant mood. We should get ourselves into mental harmony, should become serene and quiet before retiring, and, if possible, lie down smiling, 
no matter how long it may take to secure this condition. Never retire with a frown on your brow, with a perplexed, troubled, vexed expression. Smooth out the wrinkles, drive away all the enemies of your peace of mind, and never allow yourself to go to bed with critical, cruel, jealous thoughts toward anyone. It is bad enough to feel inimical towards others when under severe provocation or in a hot temper, but you certainly cannot afford deliberately to continue this state of mind after the provocation has ceased. The wear and tear upon your nervous system and your health takes too much out of you. Be at peace with all the world at least once every twenty-four hours. You cannot afford to allow the enemies of your happiness and your manhood or womanhood to etch their miserable images deeper and deeper into your life and character as you sleep. Many of us with crotchety, sour dispositions and quick tempers sometimes have very hard work to be decent in our treatment of others. But we can, at least when we are alone, and away from the people who nettle and antagonize us. Forget injuries, quit harboring unpleasant thoughts and hard feelings toward others. It is a great thing to form a habit of forgetting and forgiving before going to sleep, of clearing the mind of all happiness and success enemies. If we have been impulsive, foolish, or wicked during the day in our treatment of others, if we have been holding a vicious, ugly, revengeful, jealous attitude toward others, it is a good time to wipe off the slate and start anew. It is a blessed thing to put into practice St. Paul's exhortation to the Ephesians. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. If you wish to wake up feeling refreshed and renewed, you simply must retire in a happy, forgiving, cheerful mood. If you go to sleep in an ugly mood, or while worrying or depressed, you will wake up tired, exhausted, and with no elasticity or spring in your brain, or buoyancy in your spirits, for the blood, poisoned by worry, by discordant mood, is incapable of refreshing the brain. If you have a grudge against another, forget it, wipe it out, erase it completely and substitute a charitable love thought, a kindly generous thought, before you fall asleep. If you make a habit of clearing the mind every night of its enemies, of driving them all out before you go to sleep, your slumber will be undisturbed by hideous dreams, and you will arise refreshed, renewed. Clean your mental house before retiring. Throw out everything that causes you pain, everything that is disagreeable, undesirable, all unkind thoughts of anger, hatred, jealousy, all selfish, uncharitable thoughts. Do not allow them to print their black, hideous pictures upon your mind. And when you have let go of all the rubbish you have swept and dusted and garnished your mind, fill it full of the pleasantest, sweetest, happiest, most helpful, encouraging, uplifting thought pictures possible. An evening happiness bath ought to be the custom in every home. A bath of love and good will toward every living creature is more important than a water bath. We should fall asleep in the most cheerful, the happiest possible frame of mind. Our minds should be filled with lofty thoughts with thoughts of love and of helpfulness, thoughts which will continue to create that which is helpful and uplifting, which will renew the soul and help us to awake in the morning refreshed and in superb condition for the day's work. If you have any difficulty in banishing unpleasant or torturing thoughts, force yourself to read some good inspiring book, something that will smooth out your wrinkles and put you in a happy mood, something that will make you see the real grandeur and beauty of life, something 
that will make you feel ashamed of petty meanness and narrow, uncharitable thoughts. After a little practice, you will be surprised to see how quickly and completely you can change your whole mental attitude, so that you will face life the right way before you fall asleep. You will be surprised also to find how wonderfully serene, calm, refreshed and rejuvenated you will be when you wake in the morning, and how much easier it will be to start right, and wear a smile that won't come off during the day, than it was when you went to bed in an ill-humoured, worrying, or ugly mood, or full of ungenerous, uncharitable thoughts. Unless you tune your mind to a harmony for sleep, there will be a constant strain upon the nervous system, even if you do manage to go to sleep with a troubled mind, the brain keeps on working, and you will wake up exhausted. We should take special pains to erase the memory of all unfortunate experiences of the day, all domestic business or professional troubles and anxieties, in order to retire in a placid, peaceful, harmonious state of mind, not only because of the necessity of rising refreshed and invigorated in the morning, but because the character and the disposition are affected by the condition of the mind upon falling asleep. Mental discords not only prevent sound sleep, but also leave in the blood poisonous waste from the chemical changes which in turn dulls and impairs the brain action. Many businessmen suffer so much torture at night that some of them actually dread to retire because of the long, tedious, wakeful hours. Financial troubles are particularly exaggerated at night, and even many optimists suffer more or less from pessimism then. Businessmen ought to know how to turn off brain power when they are not using it. They would not think of leaving or closing their factories at night, without turning off the machinery power, why should they then attempt to go to sleep without turning off their mental power? It is infinitely important to one's health to turn off mental power when not actually using it to produce something. When you get through your regular day's work, why allow your precious energy to dribble away in little worries. Why carry your business home, take it to bed with you, and waste your life forces in ineffective thinking? Why permit a great leakage of mental energy and a waste of life force? You must learn to shut off mental steam when you quit work. Many men use up almost as much mental energy in the evening and in a restless night as during their actual work in the day. Refresh, renew, rejuvenate yourself by play and pleasant recreation. Play as hard as you work. Have a jolly good time, and then you will get that refreshing, invigorating sleep which gives an overplus of energy, a buoyancy of spirit, which will make you eager to plunge into the next day's work. No matter how tired or busy you are, or how late you retire, make it a rule never to go to sleep without erasing every unfortunate impression, every disagreeable experience, every unkind thought, every particle of envy, jealousy, and selfishness from the mind. Just imagine that the words harmony, good cheer, and Good will to every living creature are written all over your sleeping room in letters of light. People who have learned the art of putting themselves into harmony with all the world before they retire, of never harboring a thought of jealousy, hatred, envy, revenge, or ill will of any kind against any human being, get a great deal more out of sleep, and retain their youth much longer and are much more efficient than those who have the habit of reviewing their disagreeable experiences and thinking about all their troubles and trials in the night. Make it a rule to put the mind into harmony 
and a goodwill attitude when retiring, and you will be surprised to see how much fresher, younger, stronger, and more normal you will become. I know people whose lives have been completely revolutionized by this experiment of putting themselves in tune before going to sleep. Formerly, they were in the habit of retiring in a bad mood, tired, discouraged over anticipated evils and all sorts of worries and anxieties. They would worry over the bad things in their business, the unfortunate conditions in their affairs, and their mistakes, and would discuss their misfortunes at night with their wives. The result was that their minds were in an upset condition when they fell asleep, and these melancholy, black, ugly pictures, so exaggerated in awful vividness in the stillness, became etched deeper and deeper into their minds, and they awoke in the morning weary and exhausted, instead of feeling, as everyone should, like a newly made creature with fresh ambition and invigorated determination. Form the habit of making a call upon the great within of you before retiring. Leave the message of uplift, of self-betterment, self-enlargement, which you yearn for and long to realize but do not know how to bring about. Registering this call, this demand for something higher and nobler in your subconsciousness, putting it right up to yourself, will work like a leaven during the night, and after a while all the building forces within you will help to unite in furthering your aim, in helping you to realize your vision. There are marvelous possibilities for health building, success building, happiness building, in the preparation of the mind before going to sleep, by impressing, declaring, picturing as vividly as possible our ideals of ourselves, what we would like to become, and what we long to accomplish. You will be surprised to see how quickly that wonderful force in your subjective self will begin to shape the pattern, to copy the model which you thus give it. In these great interior, creative, restorative forces lies the great secret of life. Blessed is he who findeth it. End of chapter 55 Take a pleasant thought to bed with you. Recording by Luke Sartor, Griffith, New South Wales.